Hi, I'm Dan and welcome to Airbrush Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Today, I'm going to do a video on what it takes to get started in airbrushing. I'm going to go over my setup. I'm also going to talk about the setup I had when I got started and some of the mistakes I made so you don't have to make those same mistakes. I'm also going to go over how to get started with a minimal investment, but the proper equipment that I feel you're going to want to use to achieve good results. So if that's something you're interested in, please stick around, consider subscribing, hit that bell so you get future notifications. A couple comments, good or bad, really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. A thumbs up will be great. Don't forget to check out all those Amazon affiliate links down below for the products I use in this video and all my other videos. And with that, let's get started. All right, well, there's only four things that you're going to need to be able to get started to see if you like airbrushing. One, it's a compressor. Two is an airbrush. Three is a basic set of paints. And four, something to paint on. The compressor. There's many types of compressors you can buy. I started off with a Central Pneumatic Harbor Freight tankless air compressor, and I've used it for many, many years when I first started painting. But I used to get a lot of water problems. Even though I ran moisture traps, it got very hot but it was my most economical solution at the time. They still sell that compressor at Harbor Freight. And I painted many great things with it. But for a few dollars more, you can go with a compressor with a tank. A tank compressor is always better because it doesn't run continuously. It doesn't get hot. And I have no moisture problems anymore. I have no water building up in any of my traps. So for a few dollars more, I recommend getting the tank air compressor. So the compressor I use in my shop now, it's my third compressor. And I'll show you the second one here that I used. And that's a fine compressor. But for the money, the two gallon compressor from Harbor Freight that I run here in my shop is actually a little cheaper than a lot of these airbrush compressors that you find online. The other one they have is also a Fortress. It's a one gallon compressor. I got that for an uncle of mine and he absolutely loves it. And that one sells for about $130. So again, another great compressor. They're the compressors I use and I recommend. I have videos and reviews on all of those compressors. You can go check them out on the channel when you get a chance. The other thing you're going to need is a regulator for your compressor. The regulator, as you see right here, is going to be used to regulate how much PSI or pounds per square inch of pressure you're going to be getting from your compressor to your airbrush. I spray around 27 PSI for 99% of the things that I do. I know there's others out there. They're going to be spraying at lower pressures, higher pressures. Again, I run mostly, you know, 0.3, anywhere from a 0.2 to a 0.3, 0.35 needle nozzle combination. So the 27 PSI seems to work really well for me. Now, if you're running a 0.5 airbrush or a siphon fed airbrush, you're going to be spraying at a, probably a higher PSI. But I run all gravity feed airbrushes, as you'll see in a minute. Number two, you're going to need an airbrush. I recommend you go middle of the road at least to start with don't buy the $20 airbrush. I think you want to get started with something that's going to be reliable, that's going to work properly, consistently, because if you don't, you're going to get really frustrated and you're going to put it down. Iwata makes a $60 airbrush, the Neo for Iwata. You can pick it up at your local Hobby Lobby for about $60 or I'll pop a link down below. You can get it on Amazon. So for $60, that's really all you need to spend just to get started. Now, if your budget can endure a little bit more, I recommend that you get the Iwata HP CS Eclipse. This brush I've had for over 20 years. It's the first gravity fed gun that I owned. I bought it about a year after I started airbrushing. I started with a Pache VL siphon fed airbrush. When I decided I wanted to go to a gravity fed airbrush, I did some research. This was about $120 at the time. It's about $160 now. Again, I'll pop a link down for this one as well. And it's just been a fabulous airbrush. I've airbrushed almost everything that I've airbrushed with it, or it's had a part in whatever I airbrushed. Now, Watt is not the only good airbrush out there. There's many other airbrushes, as I said, Pache, Badger, Grex. I mean, there is just a lot. All I'm trying to get across to you is that you don't want to start with the $20 airbrush. You want to start with something that is known for quality and a lot of the names that i just said and many more depending on where your region is or where you're at have those type of airbrushes so just start with something that 
you know or is recommended from you know other airbrushers like myself or other reviews that you watch out there that is reliable number three paint i happen to use createx again there's many other manufacturers out there that produce paint that are very good i just happen to know the most about createx because that's the paint i paint with all the time whether it's wicked or illustration colors they're the two createx paints that i paint with so it is good to get used to one particular paint because different paints are going to behave differently in your airbrush you know depending on you know what you reduce it with how you reduce it how much you have to reduce it so it really does benefit you to go with one type of paint or find a type of paint that you like that works well for what you're doing and stick with that because you're only going to get better at working with it because it does take a little time and practice to get used to whatever paint that you're working with. I don't recommend you go out and buy all of the paint that you see here behind me. Um, that would be very expensive. That is a buildup over you know many, many years. I would just go out and buy a basic set of paints, your primary colors. I'll pop a link down below again for a basic primary set of paint. With your primary colors, you can mix, you know, just every color on the color wheel. So that's really all you need to get started. And when you're just getting started, you're really going to want to do all of those practice techniques anyway. So I just really used one color of my hairbrush just because I wanted to just sit down for an hour and paint lines and dots and I had no need to change colors. So you don't need a big expense on paint. I mean, you don't even need to buy a full set like this. You can go down to your local Hobby Lobby and if you have one of those around, they have Createx paints right on the shelf. You can just pick up a bottle or two just to get started. Fourth and last, you're going to need something to paint on. Really, all you need is something to put a piece of paper on. I know a lot of people use paper towels. I don't particularly like paper towels just because they're way too forgiving and it doesn't give you a good sense of how, in my opinion, how the airbrush is really working. Because when you're first starting, you'll notice that you get a lot of spidering and paper towels tend to soak it up versus allowing to paint the spider so you can learn how not to get it to do that. So I personally like just a regular, you know, plain old piece of paper. This is just on a metal backing board. That's the type of setup I like with some magnets. You don't need to be going out and buying, you know, canvases and stuff like that because that can get expensive. Just get yourself some plain old paper to practice on and something to prop it up on. Now, I like my easel here. I got this again at Hobby Lobby, but these easels can get quite expensive. So when I first got started, actually, I made my own. Once I decided I was going to continue airbrushing, I went out and invested a little bit more in a nice easel. This one even has a nice little drawer inside, but it's a great little tabletop easel. All right, so the last and most important lesson that I think I've learned throughout the years and the mistake I made when I first started airbrushing was, is I wanted instant results. I thought I was going to put some paint in an airbrush and paint this great painting like in an hour or two. Well, I found out that that's not how it works. First, you have to learn all of the basics. Now, once you get by all of the basics, the tendency when you're doing a painting is to put the paint on too heavy or too much. It's hard with airbrushing to go lighter. It's easier to go darker. So my advice to you is to learn to work in light layers. And I think I would have saw my artwork advance a lot quicker if I would have realized that sooner. All right, there you have it. So that's what I think you need to do if you want to get started in airbrushing and not put out a big investment. The biggest thing you have to remember when you first get started airbrushing is it's going to take a little bit of time and a lot of practice. You really do want to start with all of those basics. Go check out some basic videos. They're all over YouTube. I have some. I'll pop a link up above to my basic video. But go check out a whole bunch of them. And you know what? There is no substitute for learning all of those lines, dagger strokes, dots, shading, light sources. It just takes some time. Be patient with it. So with that, hope you liked this video. If you did, you guys know the drill. Consider subscribing. Hit those links. Thumbs up. Comment. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. We're getting really close to 10,000. When we do, we're going to do a nice big giveaway. So with that... We'll see you in the next video.